In my opinion, Darkside Field is one of the worst gaming log cows that I have ever come across on the internet. For those of you who think I'm coming off a little too harsh when I say this, you'll probably stick around until the end of the video and I assure you, you'll probably feel just as disgusted as I am. I know at this point VSP is widely known as one of the worst gamers on the internet, but it kind of goes deeper than the surface level stuff you probably know DSP for, and I think we all know what I'm talking about when I say this. I got pro like, completely exposed. Absolutely. Yeah, you, did. I, you didn't even know, know the camera was on. You know every inch of my dick and balls. Are you the guy? Right? You know every you the inch guy? of my dick and balls. It's the guy <laughs> watching his Twitch. Is that really him? So go ahead and get yourself comfortable, because we're going to take a look into the morality of Dark Side Field. Going far back in time, before DSP got his start on YouTube, his rise to infamy started out as an average MGC player. And when I say average, I'm being nice. <laughs> he was fucking terrible at fighting games. But there was one game where he was fairly better than average. And that game was Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Now, at this point in time, Street Fighter 2 is a very old game. It's 31 years old. Even though its legacy paved the way for the current fighting games we have today, Street Fighter 2 in my opinion doesn't hold up to the other fighters we have now, and DSP still plays it. I'm jumping, it's the lag! It won't let me jump when I need to. See? I'm trying to jump in reaction to the sonic boom and the game won't let me, because it's too delayed. Oh my fucking god. Dude, are you kidding me? He won because of lag, it's unbelievable bullshit. How much you wanna bet the guy fucking used the lag switch? What? I did that! I jumped and pressed medium kick! Fuck that! I was doing jumping medium kick and his comes out first. Bullshit. Now, don't get me wrong. DSP does have very good knowledge on the game, but the way he plays is very pattern-like. During his Street Fighter 2 screams, he loves to kind of pick his opponents and uses the game's cheesy bullshit to win. All while claiming he's a very skilled player and never uses scrub tactics to win. Almighty Cinnamon cheered. He said, wait a spam projectiles and match yeah, supers, you cool, scrub. Cool. That's right. I do every dirty tactic in the book to win. It doesn't matter if it's fair or fun. I just use top tier strategies. So where's the, where's the self-awareness there, DSP? You get mad when other people play like that. Watching him play Retro Street Fighter is like watching the GM Overwatch player smurfing bronze all day while calling himself the best player to ever do this shit. You can clearly tell the people he plays against have no idea what the fuck they're doing. And he would stay there, bending up the same three players until they leave the lobby or somehow Goji Tinks or Jose gets into the room. Now I have to quit because Jose ruined it. Jose fucking ruined it and I have to leave the lobby and that's the end of my fun in that lobby. That was 45 minutes of spankings against those people. They were getting whooped, man. And now Goji Tanks is here, so I ignore that lobby, I join a different one. You see, DSP doesn't like competition. He doesn't like losing in horrible fashion to a player that's just simply better than he is at the game. His ego won't allow for that. He is content with pub stopping the same three players over and over again because he never learned how to grow from failure. Now, back before he was hated on YouTube, DSP was out attending tournament after tournament, spending thousands on traveling fees and losing a shitload of money matches. He genuinely believed that he had the skill level to compete with other top tier players at the time. The result from these matches, however, would end up exactly like how you think it would play out. He would lose quite often and have this shitty attitude that earned contempt from most players. Believe it or not though, there was actually some FGC players who would bag up Darkside Field and even defend him for some of the backlash he would receive from most players. All right. We got the man of all hate, the one and only DSP, Dark Side Phil. I call him Phil, cause Phil's cool. Anyhow, anyhow, Phil, how you feel about ST? Notice in that video, DSP was referred to as the King of Hate. This is a title DSP still somewhat clings onto to this day with series named Axe the King or Feasting with the King, but this nickname started all in his FGC days. Now. DSP would tell you he came up with his name for having gaming thoughts and opinions some would call controversial, but I believe the more accurate theory for this name came about for his rude behavior and bad manners he would have for his fellow players. DSP, stop recording. No one gets a shit. Play. You can't hold up a tournament. Where am I playing? You still haven't told me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! Treat you like you're a <laughs> Want me to write the fucking trailer for you? Oh. With all this being said, I don't want to shy away from the simple fact. DSP was pretty good at Street Fighter 2. Not to an amazing standard, but pretty good nonetheless. 
He was even good enough to take out Justin Wong from a tournament, a win that clearly went straight to that nigga's head. First of all, a lot of people, you know, they're nut huggers, dick riders, they say Justin Wong is the god of fighting games and all that. I think a lot of people just got shut up. That's my two cents. And just as a proof, you know, that someone like Justin Wong isn't, you know, invincible, Justin Wong was pretty much beating everyone on the East Coast in Super Turbo until I stepped up a couple years ago and I beat him twice, once at Evo East 2006 and once in 2007. And basically then he came to me and he said, Phil, you're the best Super Turbo player on the East Coast. I mean, hands down, you know, and it's not my specialty. You know, I try to learn this top tier stuff, but you are the best. And Justin Wong is kind of an interesting subject when talking about DSP. As you can see in that video, he talked about Justin Wong with a lot of hostility. And I know I'm bringing up a taboo subject when I say this, but it plays a theme on DSP's ever rampant racism for Asians. In China, they say, Chiki Chang. Now, I don't want to jump into a taboo subject such as racism, but it does play a big factor into why DSP isn't finally remembered in FGC. You see, DSP is a very big WWE fan. And as you can see in some of the interviews he had, he treated them like he was playing a heel with calling out people and such. And if you know something about DSP, he really doesn't know when to shut the fuck up. And all of this came back to bite him in the ass when he got into a little feud with Jaha and Mike Watson. Hmm. I guess I would agree with you with DSP. Yeah, my like, boy. Because what DSP does, uh, like, in person he's all nice to me and shit, but in per and, then, and then when he makes a YouTube video, he, he thinks he's all hard and crap. Uh-huh. So that's what gets me pissed off. Like, do you guys remember the whole thing with... DSP and like, like with the West Coast people, where they almost like he he was like really scared because he was about to get beat up. At he Evo was about to get roughed up. Yeah, I remember that in San I think, Diego. I think Jaha approached him at Evo or something, right? Evo West. Uh, Evo West was at the San Diego yeah. event. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think like Jaha and like Watson were like looking for him if he ever came down to one of the Evo events or something. Yeah. So like he was like, I heard he was like crying and everything. So that was pretty, <laughs> pretty funny. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when. DSP was leaving with like him and a couple of his boys. It was uh, that's when it was time to like roll up on him. We followed him outside and we caught him outside. And I'm there with my freaking JVC Kaboom box and shit because that's how I rolled <laughs> and stuff. And I was with a couple of my fucking boys, and uh, they were getting up in like, you know, DSP's fucking friends' faces too, just to fucking make sure none of them got crazy. But they were all fucking shitting bricks. Okay. And uh, and then. To be honest, there's another guy there. I don't know if you guys ever heard of his name's Desmond Pinkney. He's an executioner. He was a Marvel 2 player. I remember him being there. One of his friends was fucking videotaping this. Too bad it fucking never got out anywhere. Maybe he freaking recorded a sex tape over it or some family vacation, but it never hit the internet. And, uh, Fucking, he was videotaping it, and I'm fucking getting up in his face, asking him why the fuck he's talking shit, and what the fuck's his problem, and he's fucking just, you know, just fucking cowering, and all fucking scared, and him and his friends are trying to fucking leave, and we're not letting them, and then, you know, I pretty much, to make a long story short, I pretty much just fucking told him, hey, you fucking lost one match, you're gonna fucking pay him fucking $10, mm -hmm. or fucking $20, because that's the percentage of fucking the matches that, uh, he would have fucking lost which, <laughs> and fucking, you know, just scared fucking him shitless until he fucking, you know, he paid the fucking like $10 or whatever to fucking shady. Him. Then we let him fucking leave and then he fucking got the fuck out of there with the quickness, you know, he just, he just turns fucking white. And it's funny because he just like talks so much shit on the internet. But when you run into him in fucking person, he's just fucking, you know, turns white as a ghost. Believe it or not, that wasn't the only time DSP let his mouth almost get him into a public beatdown that would have lived in means forever. There was another well-known Street Fighter player that he started a beef with, and that player's name was Viscont. There's going to come a point when you forget about what happened, and you're going to want to come back at me. And you're going to want to wash the taste of my dick out of your mouth. Now the funeral is over, and all the tears are dried up. Niggas hanging tape on the cut, getting fired up. Yes, the same Viscont we all know and love. Now I did some research on the subject after hearing about it and found this reddit post from Viscai himself about the time him and DSP almost came to blows. I'll read it out for all you illiterate niggas out there. I'm trying to remember how the whole thing started and I can't. This would have been either EVO 2005 or 2006 because I was working at some hole in the wall Mexican boxing gym at the time and I quit that place in July 06 when I moved away. I know a money match was involved and I know Phil had been talking trash for weeks and months before I finally got sick of it. I'm pretty sure Favorite 55 is right when I challenged him to a money match and knew he wasn't going to accept and was going to be all like, well, I'll fight me in real life at EVO, and I accepted it. 
I can't remember what the game was because even though I was thoroughly washed up in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, he had literally zero shot at me in that game. Mix up 10 on him at ECC and he wouldn't have done any better on me in CVS 2 or 3. He stood about the same chance as Marvel. If he was Street Fighter, I don't know why he would decline because even though I was good at the game, that's the only game he was relevant at on a national level, so there's no reason for him to decline. Anyways, that part's not important. It started over a money match challenge that I and everyone else knew he was going to bail on. From here, it turns into what sounds like a total farce, except I can assure you that it was 100% serious, which makes both of us look like total complete fucking idiots. So first, Phil was like, okay, well you have to sign some documents because if I kill you, I don't want to be responsible. And I was like, whatever. Then there was an actual serious negotiation over who the ref was going to be, and I think we said it on Walter from Connecticut, but I don't remember this part either. Then there was an honest to god negotiation over weight and that we were going to have to do weigh-ins and everything. Again, I'm not making any of this up as dumb as it sounds. This absolutely happened. Finally, it was agreed that he wouldn't have to go on the dial to fight me, and it was settled that we were going to fight, and it was going to have MMA rules. It would have a referee, and we sign waivers. God, I was dumb in the mid-2000s. Anyway, so we agreed upon this early in the year and from here on is where the story gets weird. So apparently Phil was under the impression that this wasn't going to happen and that this was just internet shit talk. But a few people from the west coast went out to one of the east coast tournaments and told him that A. I was taking this seriously and was going to fight him. B. Had probably been in more gym fights in the past two months than he ever been in his life. So one day Phil instant messages me on AIM and tries to back out. He was like, hey, so how about this? How about we pretend like we're going to fight and then when the whole crowd is around us, we both do DX crotch 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 chops to the crowd. It'll be such a goof. This really happened. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? I honestly couldn't believe he was pulling this and I was still mad about the whole thing and actually wanted to fight him. I told him I wasn't going to do any of that trolling, but if you wanted to drop it, then fine, I'll drop it. We can be adults about this, and that's pretty much what happened. I'm not going to jump him from behind in the parking lot or get in his face and threaten him. From that point on, there was never really any problems between him and I. In fact, the next year when Evo West was in San Diego, I let him stay at my place. That year when Mike Watson and Jaha were about to kill him in the parking garage. I stepped between them and defused the situation. He later would go on to have more serious problems with Watson and Jaha, but I made sure that wasn't going to happen while he was staying with me. Generally don't hold grudges, so even though I remember being really pissed off at the time, by the time the parking garage thing happened a year later I was over it. So yeah, it was a really dumb story and makes me look just as bad as him. Well, I never proposed doing fucking DX cross chops in front of a crowd of people, but I was dumb too. But that's what happened. So as you can see from those two stories, it shows DSP is nothing more than a legit coward. He would talk all this shit behind your back, but the second you get in his face and push back, he gets quiet and tries to hide and deflect. It's the reason why nowadays, he wouldn't dream of leaving his big, safe, gated community unless it's to go out and get groceries with his horse. The only power he has is banning people out of chat because he knows that's all he has. He's a total bitch on the internet as well because he will ban and block you and then he'll talk shit when you can't respond. If someone has a mic in a multiplayer game, he will shut off the whole game because he can't talk shit to save his life. And even if he could, it doesn't matter. Everyone in the FTC and pretty much out of the community knows Phil is a grade A bitch. Don't ever let Phil tell you he doesn't need the FTC. They were doing fine before him and they're doing even better now that he's gone. In my opinion, he was never a real FGC player to begin with. He was only good at Street Fighter 2 and was average at best at the rest of them. He only plays Street Fighter 2 on screen consistently because he knows that he will get fucked up in anything else. Look at Fighters, Mortal Kombat, or hell, even any modern Street Fighter game besides Street Fighter 2. He's the perfect example of what a scrub is and he will remain that until the day it all ends for him. Darkseid Field is the biggest low cow to ever come out of the FGC. Alright guys, this is possibly the end of part one. Um, I know I don't usually do videos like this on my channel, but I just wanted to test out something new. Uh, I never really did a, um, <laughs> a video essay before, but hey, it's my first attempt and I'm pretty sure I'll get better with it down the line. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like. There will be another video like this coming out soon, but I don't know. This, this actually takes a lot more work than I initially thought. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I already said that. Please leave a like and subscribe for more content just like this. This has been X Mortis, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. See you later.